Hello, sunshine. I'm Alexi Lalas, and welcome to the State of the Union podcast, where we look at the beautiful game on and off the field through the lens of red, white, and blue colored glasses. This is a very special edition of the State of the Union because we have a very special guest, the great Chad Johnson. You know him. You might know him as Ocho Cinco from back in the day. You might know him as one of the great NFL players. But what you might not know, David Mossy joining me here, is that Chad Johnson is a huge soccer player and a huge soccer fan. He has been his entire life. And I guess most importantly, mm -hmm. in all of these things, Mossy, that Chad has done, he is now going to be able to check off that box and say that he has worked with the great David Mossy and myself and all of our team at Fox because we have just announced that he will be joining our team in our coverage mm -hmm. on Fox in November and mm -hmm. December at the World Cup. Welcome, Chad. And we're going to call you Chad, right? Yeah, Because yeah, I know over the years, the name has gone here yeah, and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Javon? Can I call you Javon? You can. That'd be nice because I've never laid with my, my middle name before. Ex well, I, I looked like it up. That's I did my one. research. That's I'm going to call you Javon the entire World Cup. And just, I like we're going to screw with everybody. I like it's, it. I like it. It's going to be wonderful. Like well, it. welcome. Welcome Thank to you. the team. We cannot Thank wait. As I mentioned, uh, you are a big soccer fan and Huge. a big soccer player. I have been on the field with you. I can attest the man knows how to play. So whether it's actually on the field playing, whether it's FIFA, we'll get into that, uh, all of that, uh, whether it's following all of the different teams that you follow, you love soccer. So give us a little background <clears throat> in terms of how you came to the game. Okay, I'm going to go all, all the way back to elementary. Okay. Obviously, let's start with where I'm from. I'm from Miami, Florida. I'm from a, a beautiful place, a luxurious place called Liberty City. No resources back then in the 80s to obviously play the game that I fell in love with in elementary school and PE class. I remember my PE teacher, Mr. Tellis, dumps out all the balls, and the one thing I gravitated to was the black and white soccer ball. Then I learned, that's where I learned about the game of soccer back then. But obviously where I'm from, we don't have the resources, I didn't have the money to play the game of soccer, so what did I do? I just watched what I could on TV at the time. Uh, during that time, I forgot what year it might have been, I'm really old now, but, and just ever since then, I've always wanted to play soccer, but never had the time to play. Then I get to high school, when, okay, finally, I'm at a point where I can play in a structured environment and learn the game, it was during the same time in football. I still couldn't play. So at that point, football was my route as far as longevity and having a career, and that's what I did, but always loved the game of soccer, always, and followed it since then. So it's always been pulling you to a certain extent, even always. when you were doing you know, American yeah. football and doing all that. The, the good thing about once I made it to the NFL and I started out with Nike, and then I had the resources and built the relationship with people Across the water, and that is because I was with Nike. That's when I was able to meet, you know, Ronaldo, Thierry Henry, and all these guys, and built a relationship with them, and started traveling. Every off season was spent over there, watching games and learning the game. So I've been doing that for a very, very long time, and what, almost 20 some years now. I think I know pretty much. Not the best because I didn't play it at a high level, but I, I know. Oh, well, you know, we've talked before. You know, oh, yeah. you know plenty. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Ronaldo, Thierry Henry. I was mm -hmm. going to ask, who are some of the players that made you fall in love with the game that you remember watching when you were... Oh, Maradona first. Maradona first. Smart man. First. First. I mean, what he was able to do, the way he's able to manipulate the ball and do some of the tricks back then and now obviously make the defenders look, look silly was unbelievable. And still to this day, I can't do any of that. <laughs> I can run fast straight ahead. That's pretty much it. But what he was able to do back then, uh, I gained respect for him. And obviously, that's why I'm a fan of Napoli now. Oh, wow. Oh. You're a Napoli fan. Huge. Okay, so that's you're it. a Napoli, Napoli fan. Napoli than everybody Spurs, else. Spurs, right? My cousin is Huming Sung. Yes, <laughs> we're related through marriage. Okay. I'll there explain it later. All right. That's <laughs> what other teams? What other teams uh, are you into? No, that's it. That's it. Right. Yeah, and and every, everyone else. Every, yeah, the ones I support. Everyone else, I have friends. Yes, all over. All uh, over. You'll be joining us in Qatar for mm -hmm. the World Cup. Have you been to previous World Cups? No. This is the I first haven't. one you're going to. First one I'm going wow. to. Wow. And this is, a, this is it's, it's always been a dream of mine to actually attend the World Cup and enjoy the atmosphere and that experience because I know what it's like to be a Champions League. I know what it's like to go to some of the games in London and Spain and Italy, but to actually be at a World Cup where teams are representing their countries, I know that's going to be crazy. Now, uh, your your career as an athlete has mm -hmm. been fascinating, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we know all of the wonderful things that you did when it comes to the uh, at the NFL yeah. and all the different teams that you played. Mm -hmm. You also played uh, football uh, in Canada, in uh, in yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Uh, but you also, all right, even uh, played soccer mm -hmm. uh, at different times. So yeah. take us through 
the decision after you finished an incredible football career, yeah. American football career, to try the other football, if you will, uh, and uh, test your hand at that or your feet at that. Yeah, I, I, I always loved it, obviously, throughout my entire life. So I'm like, I'm still, my body's still up. I'm still able, I'm still able to move. I was able to play an injury-free career. So why not try my hand? It's a little late for me. And um, obviously I played for Boca Raton FC. Down in Miami, they gave me the opportunity to, to grace the pitch and enjoy the beautiful game as I saw it and learn from them. And it's always, it's, it, was, it was a joy, it was good. I was very fast, but didn't have the skill set that I needed to obviously be, not be a liability, that's a good word. Got it. Not be a liability. So now after a year, that was what, maybe eight, nine years ago, something like that. Now I'm a little better, where I can actually be an asset. So I'm looking to play for Napoli at some point. <laughs> there you go. I'm ready, <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, what, what position do you play? How would you describe Forward. I was yourself? up top, I was a, I was a nine. Oh. Yeah, you know, the tip of the spear. You're yeah, right there, yeah, I was right? I was right there. We need to call Greg Berhalter. I mean, we're still <laughs> looking for something when it comes to the U.S. You got yeah. some speed. You can get behind the defense. That I, can. Be, uh, I can. I uh, can. That would be good. All right. Uh, so obviously, you're coming for, to your first World Cup. But you're, yes. you're coming for fun, but you're also coming to work. Uh, yes. And we work very, very hard when it comes to uh, to a World Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, just in general, your thoughts on this World Cup whether it's players, whether mm -hmm. it's teams, things that you're excited about seeing when it comes you know, to You know, I'm excited about some of the games. I think the players that we're all used to seeing, obviously uh, the Mbappe, the Ronaldo's, Yao Felix, all those guys are going are gonna to play well. But my, my dark horse team that I would say and think of is I'm going with the USA. Okay. I'm going with us. I think, I think Pulisic and the boys and McKinney, they're, they're going to surprise a lot of people. And this is a World Cup for us to get the respect that we deserve. Uh, I know you're friends with Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. He's going to be trying to make history, becoming the first player to score in five different World Cups. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken to him recently about this tournament coming no. up? How excited is I, he? No, I haven't talked to him yet. I talked to Yao last night, though. I talked to Yao Felix and to let him know I would, I would be there. And I'm looking forward to having one-on-ones. I'm letting all the players know ahead of time. I'm going yeah. to be asking them to get one-on-ones outside of, outside of their environment when they have a chance. So I'm trying to get those exclusive for us ahead what's of time. Your, what's your your ultimate goal in terms of a one-on-one? If you just get one person. One person? That's a good question. Oh, that's a good one. I got to think about that okay. one. That's right. a good one. But, well, you, you can work on it. I mean, yeah, it's, I can, it's I can, a work in I, progress. Yeah, I can, I can reach them. I can reach them. I just mean, the, 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 getting, getting them to respond, that's the issue. Okay, uh, I mentioned the FIFA game, and we know that the FIFA game I'm the best, has, in, I'm the best in the world. I understand <laughs> that. I've read all the articles yes, where you, the you've, you've made it abundantly clear yes. that you are the best in the world. Yes. Uh, we know how influential the FIFA game has mm -hmm. been to now multiple generations yes. that have learned the game mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a wonderful way. It's been an incredibly positive influence. Right. How did you get into the game? What makes you the best? Mm -hmm. And will you be continuing to play that while, during uh, during the uh, actual World Cup? I don't think I won't be playing during the World Cup. Oh, come I think on. Couple no, games here. I, I won't have any. I won't have any time. Uh, the new FIFA FIFA 23 is coming out in very soon. I don't know the exact date, but um, I've been playing FIFA for the longest since '98, maybe '98 edition. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I've been playing ever since then. Obviously, if I couldn't be great at it in real life. You got to be great at it on video games, and that's always been my, my go-to. And I've been showing up to people's houses. That that's well documented. People that talk trash. To Unannounced? Me over, yeah. No. Well, <laughs> but they talk trash to me over Twitter. If I'm oh. in your city, like I'm in LA right now. Right. I would tweet out anybody wants to play FIFA, let me know, and I'll go through their Twitter. If if I see there's a feed, they have a feed of actually playing the game. Okay. I'll pop. I'll go to their house and play, as long as they have food in the refrigerator. And I've, I've been doing that for like almost a decade. A little dangerous, but I didn't care. That's all right. Well, speaking of food, you're a big McDonald's fan. Yeah, I just, I just had McDonald's? it. I just, it's good you for you. You just came from McDonald's. Uh, yeah, it's Breakfast? good. It's, yes. What'd you yes. get? Sausage, egg, and muffin, okay. hot cakes, and a large orange juice. All right, if we went back for lunch, what are you getting for lunch? Uh, number one, extra cheese with no onions. That's the Big Mac meal. Coke, no ice. And then, obviously, <laughs> uh, at, at night, what are we getting for dinner? Filet-O fish to balance it out. That's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Filet-O fish. Uh, random question. Uh, in the NFL, were there a lot of players that were soccer fans? Could you walk into a locker room and grab a guy and be like, hey, man, did you see that messy goal yesterday or no. not really? No. They're, they're very few, man. Very few. Very, very, very few and very seldom. They, they, they don't respect the game of soccer. They don't. I mean, I, if I, right off the top of my head right now, only, only people I can think of that are soccer fans is Ndamukong Sue, uh, Odell Beckham, and those are the only three I can think of, like right off the top of my head, that have a passion for the game of soccer and actually respect it. 
it's sort of this cliche conversation Americans have of what if our best athletes played soccer? Um, who are some NFL players, maybe past or present, that you look at, like maybe like a Barry Sanders, where you say, "Oh my God, Ooh. if that guy had played soccer with yeah. his." I, I can see, I can see Barry, Barry in the midfield, like a position like Modric or De Bruyne. Um, can you imagine? Like, uh, let me think. Um, not Tom Brady, not a goalie, no. Calvin Johnson at goalie. <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine that. That wingspan. And... Yeah, wingspan. And some of the receivers, <laughs> Tyreek Hill on the wing. It, it, it'd be ridiculous if some of our athletes, what if we only had soccer to choose from here in the States? Right. We would dominate easily. I always said that uh, Mossy's a, a, a Brazilian and a huge Brazilian mm -hmm. fan. And I always said that people like um, Barry Sanders and mm -hmm. Emmett Smith and these types of uh, these types of players with their low center of gravity, gravity. were like Romario, the great Romario from Brazil, mm -hmm. and, the, and the ability to shift their weight, weight back and forth. And obviously, for a bigger defender like me, it's Very difficult because it, get, it gets you going uh, and and uh, and doing all those things. All right, uh, as I mentioned, you do a lot of different sports. Mm -hmm. Last time we talked, because you were here for an appearance mm -hmm. um, at, at Fox, you were getting ready for a bout, Another, a yeah. boxing bout. Yeah. Uh, first off, how good are you as a as a boxer? A boxer. Mm -hmm. How good are you? Uh, one in ten. I'm probably a seven. You're a seven. Yeah. But you don't get hit, evidently. You told me. No, I, I get I in get the face. hit. You get in the face. Yeah, you, you get hit in the face, but it's the ability to minimize the damage. Okay. You're gonna get hit. Because this is your regardless. money maker here. You don't want to miss is. this thing. It up. is. I mean, no, you don't. Okay. You don't. Uh, are you continuing to box? Yes, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna continue doing it until I can't move anymore. You, t you also told me that from a workout perspective, it's mm -hmm. the best thing you've ever done. I was the other day. I was speaking of burgers. I mm -hmm. said, "Hey, we need to get a burger in you." Here, right, right. Because okay? you were you were like yeah. this year. Boxing has depleted my body completely. I'm sh I'm in shape, in very very good shape. Probably in better shape than when I actually played. Really. Even though I'm older, which is weird how that works because of what boxing is. It's very tedious, you know, on the body. The miles I have to put in the run to actually be in shape to be able to spar and be able to go go long rounds. You were not just a performer in terms of success, mm -hmm. but you were a performer as being an entertainer, yeah. okay? And I think you liked that. Yes. I think that you leaned into that. Mm -hmm. I love that about you. I love that mm -hmm. about athletes that recognize that it is a performance. Right. Uh, you, you, you played soccer. Performing and certainly the, the, you know, the performance at the end of a goal and the mm -hmm. celebration. Mm -hmm. If you were to be in Qatar, Ooh. score a goal in the World Cup, you're imagine. also famous for your touchdown celebration. Yes. What would you have done in that moment? <clears throat> that's a good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because you have the you have the slide. Yeah. No. Uh, you have the it pose. Would, it would it would have had to have been something that resonates with everyone down in the states. And what that would have been, I, I wouldn't know. But my celebrations were always always resonated with something that just happened that week. Like so you similar, prepared it though. I always, it was like a always performance. You... I did the Tiger Woods putt that we use uh, as a visual, and Tiger had just won something the day before that game, that Saturday. So that's that's where that came from. So I, if if I was to score in the World Cup, it would be something that would resonate with everybody in the states. Do you like players like that, athletes like that, that it. recognize that Listen, it is a my, performance? Yes, my favorite that many probably wouldn't agree with me. One of my favorite players is Balotelli. One of my favorites is Balotelli, and he, he's one that I've always, I've always gravitated towards because of his some antics sometimes aren't okay, but just the, the showmanship and the fun that he had, and obviously Ronaldinho. You know, it's, it goes without saying. Sure. I know you said the U.S. is your dark horse, but who would be your pick to win this World Cup? Is there a team that... Why can't it be us? Oh, okay. <laughs> why, why, why can't it be us? Fair but enough. if I had to take a pick, seriously, France. Really? You think they'll repeat? Back to back, huh? That's, uh... Unless Brazil comes to play as one. You hear what I'm going with yeah, that? Yeah. As one. No individualism. If they, if, they play, if they play ball as one, they have a great chance. What's your take on Neymar? He's a very polarized... I love Neymar. I love Neymar. I, I, I'd never say anything negative. I'd never say anything negative. I mean, what, what can you say? What can you say? Oh, he falls, oh, he dives. But he's a phenomenal player. Phenomenal player. All right, let's, uh, let's do some association here. So you mentioned, for example, Brazil. Mm -hmm. All right. So Brazil is a team of incredible talent, incredible success, mm -hmm. um, but also they do it with a, in a super sexy, creative type really? of way. If you had to give me an NFL team that mirrors what Brazil it. is, you got it? What do you got? Chiefs. The Chiefs? Yeah. Really? 
You think well, they do it in a sexy, Brazilian, yep. creative type of way? Yep, and it all, it all comes from the quarterback. Mahomes, he does, he does things that are unorthodox. He does things that you're not supposed to be doing. The players in Brazil play with the, very, with the flash, with an aura, with a sense of, sense of entertainment that is somewhat at times frowned upon. And some of the things that Patrick Mahomes and that team does offensively, it's flashy, it's frowned upon, and it goes against what you teach kids growing up playing the game of football. All right. Uh, you're really bullish about the U.S. The U.S. is going to face England. If I had, I mean, England is, yes, it's got history. Yes, it's got longevity, but they always kind of flatter to deceive. You know what that sounds like? So give me an NFL team like England. That would be the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, knew you were say that. No, I mean, it is. Yeah. Everything you just said, you led me right into it, and that's the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. That's exactly like the Cowboys. Tradition, rich tradition. They, they won before, you know, and they, everybody's hanging on what they did in the past. And they haven't done anything as of late. And then the final one, the U.S., much more of an underdog. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that they haven't been there, but they, you know, they're still growing and they're still yeah. evolving. And in yeah. a lot of times, they will be looked at as an underdog. They're young, yeah. they're inexperienced, but they got incredible heart and spirit mm -hmm. right now. Give me an NFL equivalent when it comes to that team. Mm. Grit, grind, character, personality, not always the best talent relative to anybody else out there. But they can, can, I, they can punch them other way. Can I say Detroit Lions? <laughs> you you can, can because can I'm a Detroit that? Lions fan. You are? Uh, yeah, I'm from Detroit. But everything you just named reminds me of the head coach. And it all starts with the coach, and that trickles down into the players. Okay. And based on what I saw, especially with, with hard knocks going on, it, that reminds me of, of them. They got, it, they got all the right pieces just about putting it together. They have the grit. They, they got the want because it starts with their coach, and their coach is just like what you just explained. All right, Javon, hold on a second. Are you saying that my Detroit Lions are going to have a successful year? Yeah, I think I think every year there's always a team that surprises you. You're going to have your normal team, you know, your, your Chiefs, your Packers. They're always going to be in the running. And every year there's always a team that is surprising, like, oh, my goodness, they came out of nowhere. Right. For some reason, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, the, it's going to be Lions. Bless you. From your lips to the NFL gods' <laughs> ears, okay, from a long-suffering yeah. uh, Detroit Lions fan. Uh, have you ever been to Qatar? No, no, I haven't. I, um, I, so I, have I, I know you're going to be interviewing uh, players there, but also you're going to try to get a, give us a feel for the country and a flavor of uh, the atmosphere. Yeah, most definitely. I'm going to do as much as possible um, as long as I have the time to do it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, you are not a, only a credible personality uh, inside, but also outside. Are you a sneakerhead? Not really. No. Not really. So what are we looking at when it comes to footwear? Because, listen, you're on TV yeah. on a consistent basis, day after mm. day. People are going to be looking at it. What's he wearing? What's going on? You know what? I, I'll probably have on dress shoes. Okay. I'll probably have on dress shoes if I'm wearing a suit. And any days that we have anything casual, I'll have on a type of loafer, a type of comfortable loafer, and that's pretty much it, or a pair of Air Force Ones. You're Air Force One guy. That's it. Because white goes with everything, no matter what you're wearing. So white Air Force Ones. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you use them and then throw them out, or do you use them over and over? Not are these brand new? These are brand new, oh, and if... Every time I, I wear them, you I wear a size smaller so I don't get the crease in the toe, and I always I always take a wet wipe and wipe it down once I'm done, so they last a little longer. You wear a, a size smaller so that when you step, it yeah, the crease it doesn't crease at the toe. Yeah, that's 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 messed up. And if it does These crease, are the things. These are the things. Yeah, if it does crease, you know you can iron. You can iron the crease out. Okay. Yeah, just food for thought. All right. right. Uh, so France is winning the World Cup. Who's winning the Super Bowl this year? Bengals. We're going back. We're going to repeat. We're going to repeat. Repeat going back. Repeat going back. Okay. But now. Getting it right this time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to get it right this time. All right. Well, listen, uh, it's been wonderful talking to you. What should, what should our viewers, what should our listeners think uh, in terms of what you are going to do, what you are going to mm -hmm. give uh, on a continual basis, on a day in and day out basis in your time in Qatar? Well, what I'm going to give is information that no one knew I even had. I'm going to talk about the game of soccer that people actually who don't know or follow me didn't know I knew I had or knew about. Um, I think I'm going to have a different demographic of people watching the game of soccer that have never watched before because I have a large following uh, in general. And I'm going to get them interested in a game that many of my friends and people here in the States don't respect. And I want them to understand that this is a great game and it's called a beautiful game for a reason. Ah, I love it. I love hearing that. And I love the fact that that you are such a supporter, obviously mm -hmm. a player and, and mm -hmm. everything that you do, but and, and you have been for many, many years, because yeah. we talk about it 
you know, all the time about this, this soccer tent that we mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. that continues to get bigger and bigger. Yeah, right. And we want to make sure as many people come into it as possible right. because I think you have found that it's incredibly welcoming, yeah. it's incredibly warm, it's incredibly mm -hmm. positive, mm -hmm. uh, and it can expose and introduce you to something that is going to last all of your life. Yeah. You, you know, you were just, you discovered it at a young mm -hmm. age and yeah. it has been part of you for so long. We are so excited to yeah. welcome you to the Fox Thank team. You. We cannot wait to get to a Qatar and, uh, and get you out and about oh, yeah. uh, on the streets and everywhere, everywhere else and doing all that, all that kind of I stuff. Are you ready? Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm trying, I'm trying to remain calm and poised because we're, we're, we're filming, but this is like almost a dream come true. And I, I talked to my wife yesterday and she said, what is it comparable to? I said, this is really comparable to draft day. Getting drafted, getting drafted and seeing your name go across that ticker, that's an, a feeling you can't explain. Like, I'm going to a World Cup. I get to go to games and then talk about those, get those said games as an analyst for Fox Sports. That's like getting drafted into the NFL. It's, the, the feeling is, is no different. And she's asking me, what are you tearing up for? What do you mean, what am I tearing up for? I just explained. Every time somebody gets drafted, what's the first thing they do? Yeah, cry and hug and get excited. Yeah, man, that that's that's huge. And I, the, the powers that be that that allow this to happen or, or or letting this happen and give me the opportunity, man. I thank you. Oh, Seriously, it's gonna be all. Well, if it is a draft, then we as fans uh, mm -hmm. are welcome you into the team, and we are very excited about what you, you are going to bring thank and the success that you are going to bring us. All right, we're doing Chad Johnson, right? Is that what it is? I'm doing Javon because that's said Javon. I'm doing Javon. Just, the no, let's just go with no last name. J oh yeah, right. Totally just, Brazilian. <laughs> no last name. Just Javon. We could, we could put some accent or some sort of thing there. Oh, it's just Cadinho. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else for our friend here? That's it. All right. Listen, uh, we will see you in Qatar okay. and, and plenty of times before then. Uh, Chad is going to be with us, like I said, and doing some wonderful, wonderful things out there. Uh, enjoy it. Thank you to Chad, uh, Javon, for joining us <laughs> on the uh, State of the Union podcast. And... Uh, if this dropped in your feed, um, I hope that you listen the entire way because he is dropping pearls of wisdom and he will continue to do so come November and December in Qatar for the World Cup. And you can see it all, everything on and off the field right here on Fox. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.